Hello everyone, let us discuss the final uh, topic before your midterm examination. Okay, let's start it off with uh, the sources of marketing information. So basically, there are five major sources for obtaining marketing information. So these are your uh, secondary sources, respondents, uh, natural experiments, controlled experiments, and of course, simulation. Okay, first, let's talk about your uh, secondary sources of information. So this data okay may be collected uh, from the sources if you are working in a company it's within the firm okay but in our case maybe we uh, collect this information from uh, trade journals advertising media newspaper books okay uh, internet and so on and so forth so when we speak of your secondary sources um also known as your secondary uh, information. This is an information that has been collected by persons or agencies for the purpose other than the solution of the marketing research problem at hand. Meaning to say you collect the information not on the direct source or primary uh, source of information such as your respondents. So this data as I mentioned earlier, are collected from books, journals, um, internet, uh, advertising media, uh, television, newspaper, oh, I, I mentioned it already, or maybe radio. Okay. Uh, another source of information would be the information from respondents. This is now the so-called primary source of information. So this is a second source of information obtained from the respondents. So you ask questions to the respondents, you observe their behavior. Okay, so this is a primary means of obtaining information whenever people's actions are being investigated or predicted. Okay, so the term respondent literally means the one who responds or answers both verbal and behavioral responses, which should be considered by the researcher. Okay, and then we also have another source of information, which is your natural experiment. So in here, when we speak of natural experiment, uh, the variable of interest, okay, uh, has occurred in its natural setting and you as the researcher okay look or looks for respondents who have been exposed to it so this is uh, one in which it says here the investigator intervenes only to the extent uh, required for measurement that is there is no manipulation of any assumed variable you do not manipulate any data okay so the investigator merely looks at what has happened when you say investigator you as the researcher so for example it says here if the impact of a television commercial on the attitudes were desired the investigator would conduct a survey of people after the commercial has shown to whom will they conduct the investigation or the research to those who were exposed in the commercial okay yeah natural experiment so um, those who saw the commercial would constitute the experimental group and those who were not exposed to the commercial and you still want to investigate their um, opinion it would be the so-called controlled experiments so in here when we speak of your controlled experiments um, we're talking about um, manipulation of at least one assumed variable or perhaps random assignment of subjects to experimental and control groups so when you say controlled experiments um, investigator Inter uh, intervention is actually required uh, beyond the needed for measurement purposes so there are two kinds of intervention here uh, which were mentioned earlier okay so that's your controlled experiments and then finally is simulation 
Okay, so simulations have been developed for uh, marketing decisions, uh, making or marketing decision application uh, as marketing system, marketing uh, mix elements, developing new product, okay, etc., etc. So simulation can be defined as a set of techniques for manipulating a model of some real world process to find numerical solutions that represent the real process you simulate okay in the real world process you simulate uh yon. um simulation may be used for research instruction decision making or some combination of these applications uh, especially if you want to determine if the new product uh, a company has created let's say if you want to know if this is effective or not you have to uh, do simulation okay in the real world so that you learn um, accurate information of course from the users of the product all right so these are the sources of information or marketing information that you can use in your marketing research Okay, let's proceed now to your research interview. So perhaps after um, you determine what sources of information might be utilized in your research, okay, you'll be conducting research interview. So when we speak of interview, you know it so well that this is a means of obtaining information from respondents. Okay, uh, interview could be what... Um, dyadic as it says here person to person that involves asking and of course answering of questions so in addition to that it says here universal dimensions underlie the relationships that are shaped as part of every interview so there should be involvement uh, which in encompasses the degree to which each party wants to make part or take part in the interview including the degree of commitment of each to make it a success so even if you are so involved as a researcher if your respondents are not so involved your research might not be a success so be careful when you actually conduct interview and then next we also have here control when we speak of control this is the degree to which um, the power of the interviewer or interviewee has to affect the interview process and its outcome. If you are a researcher, you know it so well that your respondents have the control. If they do not want to be interviewed or they do not want to, be, uh, to participate in your research, please do not force them. And then relationship, this is the degree of warmth or friendship between the interview parties. Okay, there. Okay, now let's proceed to the structure of interviews. So interviews in marketing research and behavioral sciences uh, typically involve information gathering. You cannot go away from information gathering because it's needed in your research and uh these are usually classi classified by two major characteristics as you can see here so an interview is either what structured or unstructured depending on whether a formal questionnaire has been formulated and the questions asked are in pre-arranged order yeah um an interview is also categorized either direct or indirect okay so reflecting whether the purpose of the questions are intentionally disguised so cross classifying these two characteristics would actually help you identify okay um, the different types of interviews so these types of interviews as you can see a and b are basically uh, objectivists um, type c and d uh, is uh, subjectivist so let's try to discuss this okay 
All right. So when we speak of your structured direct interviews, um, these are usually type of consumer survey wherein you want to get the facts. So you, uh, this is usually obtained in um, a descriptive manner or descriptive information wherein a formal questionnaire is used consisting of non-disguised questions. When you say non-disguised questions, these are easily understood. Uh, there is no double uh, barrel uh, questions wherein um, your respondents might be confused with what you want to get from them what information would you like to get from them so your non-disguised questions all right so for example if a marketing research manager of a bedroom furniture manufacturer wants to find out how many and what kinds of people prefer various styles of headboard and dressers so a question sequence is basically fixed only those questions are asked Okay, what are those questions uh, about the style and, yeah, various styles of headboards and dressers? Only those questions are asked. Okay, so the resulting interview is called your structured direct uh, interview. Why? Because it's, it is structured direct in nature. Okay, so this is an example. So the structured direct interview has many uh, desirable features, of course, since the questions are formulated in advance. So all the required information can be obtained in an orderly and systematic fashion. So the exact wording and phrasing of the questions can be worked out carefully to reduce the likelihood of misunderstanding or influencing the answer. Okay. There you go. All right. So we also have here your unstructured direct interview. So in this kind of interview, the researcher is actually left free to ask necessary direct questions to obtain information. Okay. Using wordings and order that seem mo most appropriate in the context of each interview. So, uh, unstructured direct interviews are most often used in exploratory studies, also in qualitative research. So, um, when you speak of your qualitative research, uh, this is a type of research uh, that is more wordy. When I say more wordy, uh, they, you have to be very good in writing because, um, what's this? More on words. You will not use any scientific method to conduct your research. So in here, you have to be a very, very good writer. Okay, so it's quite verbose. Mas madaming words. So in an unstructured direct method of interviewing, the interviewer is given only general instructions okay, to obtain the type of information desired. So for example, um, let's say to use the bedroom furniture example again, uh, if the owner of a bedroom set is asked uh, the free question, what is that free question? Let's say, why did you buy your bedroom set? So, of course, the answer is almost certain to be incomplete, provide approximate, approximate causes and maybe worthless answers. So, if the interviewer were seeking motivations, consider answers such as because we need a bed or our bed was old or our bed was worn out or maybe they will answer uh, because it was on sale that's why we bought a new bedroom furniture so when motivations are given such as uh, we enjoy a comfortable or comfortable mattress that gives us a good night's sleep okay that might be the answer so uh, as you can see their answers are different uh, answers are incomplete and sometimes, yeah, they are probably rarely complete. Okay. All right. So we also have 
structured, indirect, and structured, uh, unstructured rather, indirect interviews. So a number of techniques has been devised to obtain information from respondents by indirect means. So both structured and unstructured approaches can actually be used. So it is assumed that the respondent will tend to interpret the situation in terms of his or her own needs, motives, and values. Okay. So we also have personal interviews. So we know it so well. This is a uh, a situation consists of an interviewer asking questions of one or more respondents in a face-to-face -face situation. So the interviewer's role basically is to get in touch with the respondents and ask desired questions and records the answer obtained. So recording uh, of information may be done either during the interview or in either case, it is the interviewer's responsibility to ensure that the context of the answer is clear. It's not ambiguous and that the information has been recorded uh, correctly. Okay, there you go. Okay. Mm. So in personal interviews, uh, David Kay, a partner of Research Dimensions International, uh, suggests uh, there, that there are five types of interviews for an on-site research. So we have first, stream of consciousness interview. This is a uh, conversation with questions designed to elicit what the respondent is experiencing at every moment of shopping. And then we also have spontaneous reaction interview. This asks uh, for spontaneous, minimally prompted reaction of customer uh, to their environment. And then we have directed general response interview. It's useful to assess effectiveness of strategy. This method asks general questions directed to the strategy. <clears throat> directed specific um response interview this is useful to determine why consumers feel as they do okay as indicated by answers to other questions and then prompted reaction to execution elements this is designed to elicit response to specific elements uh, for example here in an in-store um, taste test might include the question uh, what do you think about the taste of china sea brand spring rolls Okay, there you go. And then we have telephone interview. So compared to email or mail survey, telephone interviews often are more costly in terms of total cost of data collection. However, when the cost is figure, figured, on, uh, figured out okay, on a... Oh, per completed questionnaire basis, telephone interview may actually be less costly. Okay, so telephone interviews are often used in lieu of personal interviews. So especially when person or when personal contact is desired. So when the information must be collected quickly and inexpensively, and when the amount of information required is relatively limited. So you can use telephone interviews. So it is generally recognized that for business to business and perhaps consumer research, telephone interviewing is as effective as personal interviewing for scope and depth of information obtained. Okay, so aside from telephone, we also have, okay, mail interview. So mail interviews has been in the past, okay, uh, it's been widely used in the past, I should say. So, uh, mail questions uh, provide great versatility at relatively low cost. Okay. 
and are particularly cost effective sometimes all right so a questionnaire may be prepared and mailed to people in any location at the same cost per person the cost of preparing the questionnaire addressing the letter or card sent and the postage involved so that's for the cost so respondents may remain anonymous unless a name is requested and the questionnaire is openly coded or some ethically questionnaire uh, questionable practice is employed okay and then aside from that we also have your web and email interview okay uh, com as computer coverage in home markets uh, increased the use of electronic survey has also increased so web and email surveys are fulfilling their promise to be driving force in marketing research okay here you go so this is an example of a questionnaire processed by fax yeah it's an example okay and then we have your focus group interview so perhaps this is the best known and most widely used type of indirect interview okay it is known as your focus group interview. So it involves group of people jointly participating in an interview that does not use a structured question and answer method to obtain information from these people. So a trained moderator can conduct interview with ideally 8 to 12 uh, members, but increasingly only to 6 or only six to eight so willingly recruited participants the composition of the group varies according to the need of the client or the researcher especially the problem under study so that is your focus group interview okay now let's try to discuss what should be found in your paper as i mentioned before um your re marketing research is not as stringent as your business research but my approach in your marketing research will be the same as your business research i'm sure some of you had already uh, experienced writing business research when you were in your senior high so i think it's not going to be difficult for you so what should be found in your chapter one okay so in your chapter one, definitely you'll find the background of your study. Uh, so your background should provide the reader with a general orientation of the problem paper and its underlying, uh, of the research paper, I should say, and its underlying problem. So it should convey to the reader the importance and significance of your research. What would be the contribution to the development of education? Yeah even to the stakeholders and you as the researcher so there you go in addition to that when we speak of the background of your study so again this is the overview of your research you present situational analysis okay uh like for example if you want to study uh you know if customers are satisfied with the product you present a situational analysis like you search for studies or researches uh, similar to your paper or to your research. The importance you search uh, for, you know, studies in the past that talks about uh, customer satisfaction, something like that, or studies in other countries. That's why it starts in, uh, so there it says here, uh, present situational situational analysis that portrays the problem in the global yeah, and national so you search for studies like in the u.s in other countries and then you go national in the philippines what's the importance of customer satisfaction and then if there are studies here in baguio then you include that in your paper but if there are no studies it's okay so the background of the study should also discuss the following presentation of the problem uh, purpose of the study justification of the study 
personal reasons. And of course, you have to link your introduction and then your problem. So first, what should be found in the presentation of the problem? So in here, you actually tell your reader about the problem. What is the problem all about? So uh, what else? You also include a brief discussion of the existence existence of an unsatisfactory condition or felt problem that needs solution. Thus, the need for the study. Meaning to say, okay, that's why before I told you that if you look for a topic or if you look for a research, uh, you look for a company and then you try now to see is there a problem that needs solution. For example, um, as I mentioned earlier, customer satisfaction. Okay, are there complaints from customers? Have you ever heard complaints from customers? Or maybe, um, you know, the sales of a certain company declined, something like that. That is a problem. That, you, that needs solution. Bakit kaya bumaba yung sales ng company na yon? So, yun yung aaralin nyo. Yun yung gagawa nyo ng research. Or, maybe, um, you notice that employees of that certain company would keep on resigning. So, there is a high rate of employee turnover. So, again, that is a problem that, you, that needs to be solved. So, yun yung aaralin nyo. Maybe, employee satisfaction. Are they satisfied? Why do they keep on resigning? Diba? Is there something wrong with the company? So those are problems that needs or that need solution. Okay, so that should be presented in your paper. Next, <clears throat> sorry, uh, purpose of the study. So in here, uh, you briefly state the purpose or sorry, uh, what you are trying to investigate so uh, the purpose of your study should be a concise statement uh, you provide a framework for the entire study okay for example again let me go back to customer satisfaction so purpose of the study maybe you mentioned that um, the study's aim is to uh, investigate customer satisfaction of McDonald's, if that's a company that you want to study, or any company that you want to study. Okay, you have to briefly state uh, what you are proposing to investigate. And then justification of the study. So the researcher must make a clear um, statement or you have to be very particular with the subject that you want to investigate. So, you must present an argument for the worth of the study. So, dito na papasok yung sasabihin nyo na mahalaga ang aralin. Halimbawa, it's important or it's imperative to study customer satisfaction because um, customer satisfaction would, uh, would what create customer loyalty and then customer loyalty would result to perhaps a uh, repeat purchase of customers but of course you have to base that on an existing literature meaning to say you have to look for studies that really says that customer satisfaction is important okay so something like that so everything that should be written in your paper should not just be your own words meaning to say it's not your opinion or it's not your idea, but rather, okay, you look for, uh, you investigate, you look for existing literature that uh, says na yun nga, customer satisfaction is important. I hope you're getting what I mean. Anyways, you can ask questions when we meet okay via conferencing all right next is personal reason what's the reason why you conduct that particular study so you have to include that also in your paper and then finally you have to link your introduction and your problem so a sentence or two should be included or uh, included that would show the link between the background of the study and the problem so you have to remember that the background of the study is actually crucial why because it is usually what the reader browses whenever presented with a paper so it should be written in such a way that it will pique okay the interest of the reader 
Okay, and it would make him or her want to continue reading the entire paper. So, proper documentation of all borrowed ideas and concepts should be done. I will uh, provide a sample or I will give you, all right, a sample wherein you should follow your APA style. Okay, we have several... Um, What's this uh, version of APA style? But in the meantime, we will use okay the APA style first of UC, yung UC format. Okay, there you go. And then in your problem or in your chapter one, you should also include the theoretical or conceptual framework. So what are these? Um, basically, in your theoretical or conceptual framework, you are going to present theories. Okay, or concepts. Uh, in here, you are going to define terminologies included in your paper. Like for example, if you are going to study customer satisfaction, you are going to define what customer satisfaction is in your theoretical or conceptual framework. There. So um, important um, or pertinent findings, relevant methodology. Logical issues and major conclusions are also found in your theoretical or conceptual framework. So this is important because theories shall help in the interpretation of research findings. All right. So in your theoretical or conceptual framework, researchers have to go through existing literature. So in your definition, supposed to be you do not just define it in your uh, own words, but rather you have to look for literature that says this is the definition of the, such uh, theory. Like, for example, again, let me go back, customer satisfaction. You do not just say, okay, customer satisfaction is the satisfaction of customer. Right? You have to look for existing literature that really gives a definition. Okay, there you go. So theoretical framework, uh, the theoretical explanation of the phenomenon or problem being studied. So these are compilation or this is a compilation of theories okay, upon which your paper is based. If there are no theor theories or uh, in the absence of theories or formal academic theories, you can actually use your conceptual framework. So what are conceptual frameworks? So basically, when we speak of conceptual framework, you try now to define terminologies used in your studies based on how these terms are used in your research. Uh, we call this sometimes as your working definition. Okay, there. All right. And then, in either case, it says here, the use of variables and the interrelationship of variables as treated in the study have to be depicted or illustrated. So, in your business research, it also includes your paradigm or paradigm of the study. Okay. So in your paradigm, this is actually a diagrammatic representation of the conceptual framework. Uh, it would look something like this. Okay, we will use your IPO. Actually, it's IPOO model. So we have your input process and output. I will uh, guide you when we actually uh create our research paradigm. So this is a diagrammatic representation of a conceptual framework. So it is the, uh, or it depicts in a more vivid way that what the conceptual framework wants to convey. Okay, so there you go. Okay, and then after that, we have to create also your statement of the problem and hypothesis. So if you remember, I told you to create as much questions as you can because we will be using this in your statement of the problem. So there should be a main problem, which is stated in a declarative form. Okay, it covers the broad area. So, for example, I want to study, let me go back to my example a while back, uh, customer satisfaction. So, my main problem would be um, the study aims to uh, investigate 
customer satisfaction of uh, X company. Yan. That is your main problem. And then we have specific problems. Uh, these are now stated in your um, research in an interrogative form. So, for example, my main problem is what is the level? Uh, no. Um, the study aims to investigate customer satisfaction of X company. Specifically, it seeks to answer the following. What is the level of customer satisfaction of customers? Something like that. Specific. Yan. Okay. It could be followed immediately by hypothesis. Okay. So, like, for example, is there a relationship between customer satisfaction and uh, customer loyalty? So, maybe your hypothesis is that there is a relationship of customer satisfaction and, um, what's this, uh, customer loyalty, something like that. But, we will not complicate things, so we'll try to make our research simpler. Okay, there you go. Okay, next is the measurement and data collection and analysis. So, um, it is also very important important that when you conduct your research you should have your sample okay what is a sample so a sample is basically some part of a larger body uh, specially selected to present the whole so for example in here you know you cannot research your entire population so it's very important uh, i mean it's very impossible that all respondents let's say for example again let me go back to customer satisfaction you cannot research all customers of a particular company so because we have a lot but rather you will just take a sample a small number of that customers to be the representative of your entire population so that is what we call your sample so a sample is a smaller it says here but hopefully a representative collection of units from a population used to determine truths about the population okay so basically they are just representative of your entire population or entire respondents okay there you go all right, so for example, to be useful, it should reflect similarities and differences found in total group. The main objective of drawing a sample is to make inferences about a larger population from a smaller group. Okay, so why do you need to sample? Because, of course, as I said a while back, it's impossible to get the entire customers or entire respondents of uh, a certain study therefore you need to sample why it's time uh, because of time we are constraints with time constraint with time uh, and of course money there you go so we have types of sampling here we have probability and non-probability in probability sampling each person in the population has the same probability or chance of being selected so for uh, i will not uh, go deeper into this type of or types of sampling you will learn this when you have your business research but uh, most probably we will be using non-probability sampling so that there's no need for us to compute okay uh, this is quite arbitrary and subjective so the technique is that uh, there is a probability of selection of each sample unit which is not known so the selection of sampling units will be based uh, on some type of intuitive judgment desire or knowledge of the researcher what should be written in your chapter 2 of course uh there is an introductory sentence of your chapter two okay and then you should include your research and methodology the population and locale of your study your tool 
your data gathering procedure and the treatment of the data. I will give an uh, example later on. So this will introduce to the reader the design and methodology used in your study. So in here, in the research design and methodology, you have to discuss okay the research strategy that you used in your research okay so this is an example so you can use um perhaps in our research or in our marketing research we will just use descriptive survey research okay descriptive we will just describe and then we will use kasi questionnaire therefore uh, we will be using survey okay so descriptive okay and then uh we also have here your population and local so you have to discuss your population sino ang respondents nyo who are your respondents and then you have to discuss your local um uh, when you say local we are talking about uh, the location where you are going to conduct your study in your sampling what we will be using is uh siguro ano convenient sampling so yun na lang para pare pareho tayo okay so in your data gathering procedure you have to discuss how you gathered the data paano nyo dinistribute yung questionnaire okay so you discuss also whether your source of information is primary or secondary but most probably, you are going to use primary source of information uh, if you are going to study customers, if you're going to study um, the company itself, uh, your source of information might be the manager. Yan. So, yun. Uh, what else? Data gather gathering tool. We will be using um, questionnaire. So, yeah. Uh, I will not require you to conduct the reliability uh, study or reliability test rather of your questionnaire but I will read it, I will comment on it so that at least man lang there is validity of your questionnaire. And then treatment of the data, we will be using um, Likert scale. Okay, so I will give you an example later on. Um, as I mentioned earlier, ayan, here's the example of your research design and methodology. So you will be using descriptive survey research okay, to interpret or to describe um, your environment there. And then, okay, in your data gathering tool, so primary um, instrument for data gathering tool would be your, uh, sorry, primary instrument for data gathering would be your questionnaire um procedure parang dito ikukwento nyo lang you are going to tell how did you gather information diba? and then treatment of the data we will be using a four point likert scale uh, we will not use the five point likert scale because there is a pro probability that your respondents will all choose three yun yung sinasabi nilang central tendency okay so we will be using a four point likert scale okay 